Uh, I just kind of show up and do my thing and uh, I don't know. Yeah. So the big question is this. How are leaders like you that recognize people and technology are the backbone of the company they're building continue to make progress when they have no clear idea on how to develop individuals and utilize technology in a way that helps them remain profitable? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is Tom and Michaela, and welcome to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Heart and Hustle Podcast, where tonight we're going to talk about Broncos, Campers, and Golden Doodles. Hey, three of our favorite subjects. (laughs) You know, I'm like on pins and needles. My Bronco is being built. I think it's actually built. It just has an update on the website. It has a date of 11-17, so 11-17-21 is the birth date of this Bronco, yep. and I've been watching it, like refreshing it. I have a shortcut on my phone that refre- I just refresh it like every 20 minutes. <laughs> like it's, like, it's like the freaking stock market. I just want to see the built thing, and then the shipped. Yeah. And then... Uh, Ready to see the shipped. Yeah. It's like, and I almost like, when, I mean, it's coming by rail. I did see that, and it's like, I, I, w- I want to go find the train that it's on. To actually see if I can see it through the little slats in the holes to kind of see this thing coming <laughs> coming to Omaha. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. I know, but I have to tell you know I've been we had gotten um, gotten we had got whatever. <laughs> I'm an English major, Mr. Glogowski, seventh grade. <laughs> he taught me well. He done taught me well. Jeez. Um, mm, so we were kind of in this pickle because, as some of you know, I have this. Not old escape, but maybe what six, seven years old now, six years old, 2014, yeah. seven mm-hmm. years old. But it has like 213,000 miles on it, it has a lot of miles. It has a lot of miles. We've put a lot of miles in that car, we have. And uh, I think of the 213, I think I personally have driven probably close to 209. I think there's only 4,000 miles in that car that somebody else besides me um, has driven, and probably mostly you. Yeah. maybe some employees, my daughter. Um, but to that, I was considering, and to the point where we reserved one, a new Ford Maverick, one of those new, new little pickup trucks. Well, partly because we didn't think the Bronco was going to be here for another we, year. We didn't. The Bronco was supposed to be here in 2023. And uh, no, 2022. Yes, in the summer of. Yes. And uh, it all got pushed, I guess, ahead. So it's here. And then... We got the order dates, and the Bronco was to be built um, pretty much on eleven seventeen. But the Maverick gets built on December sixth. Yeah. So I'm kind of doing the math in my bean counter head here, and I'm thinking, <laughs> two new cars, two new car payments. Not cool. Not cool. No, I mean it's not. I I think it's one thing when if you're able to afford something, that's one thing. I think if you can't afford it, that's a complete other. But I think just the the idea of having two new cars at the same time, one that I'm never going to drive, I'm going to wax it with a diaper once a week, <laughs> and the other one, like all the sales tax, and it's just, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Right. So money aside, it does not make sense. So therefore, over the weekend, we decided, eh, we're going to kind of table the Maverick. Yeah. We'll hold off on and that. And we're going to keep like Kramer, you know, that episode in Seinfeld when Kramer's down to empty and he has like no gas left, but he still, he misses the freeway exit and kind of keeps on going. That's what I feel like in this, in this escape. Is it just the angle I'm looking from? No, sir. We are down there. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I never felt so alive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm satisfied. We better get some gas. What? Well, we can't stop now. What do you mean? We have to keep going all the way back to the dealership. That was the plan. There was no plan. Well, let's make it the plan. Let's just go for it, like Thelma and Louise. They drove to a dealership? No, they drove off a cliff. I'm a one sick mama. I like it. It's been yeah. a good car. It's gonna. I think it's going to last. Maybe we'll get to the 400,000 mile mark. Well, there's been nothing wrong with it. We've oh, had no problems. Nothing. No. It's very nice still. It's, it, it's not been... It's No big accidents. It's just got a lot no, of interstate miles on it. A lot it. of interstate miles. Yeah. Nothing on interstate but the interstate, right? Mm-hmm. You have no idea where that's coming from, do you? Nothing on the interstate but interstate. Who says it? Come on. I don't know. Diablo Taxi. Planes, trains, automobiles. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I remember that yeah, now. He's down in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> With the big horns when the, yeah, I don't know. Don't see nothing on the interstate but interstate. I remember that. Anyways, but... Good week this week. Um, 
you got a hell of a lot done. I did get a hell of a lot I done. I mean, I we were eating dinner the night, and I, I said, you know, this is, you're always busy. I mean, you're always, and I, I don't mean like busy, like in a, she's busy. I mean, like, she's always busy. Like, you're always working on something for somebody. Yeah. And it's not like busy work. It's just simply you're making progress. Well, then, inside of one week, you know, every company is having, and we're not going to take this podcast and see HR issues, but it's like all of a sudden it's been HR drama from a lot of organizations just dealing with the same stuff over and over. A lot of things that we've been talking about and speaking yeah. about for the past several months here, it's just, it's happening. It's all and, coming to a head. And a lot of people are seeing it, you know, everything from, you know, uh, probably compensation plans, employee, employee morale, um, you know, sometimes the younger generation meshing with the older generation um, inside the workforce. People kind of don't want to come back to work. They 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 enjoy working at home in their pajamas now. They don't want to be managed or micromanaged if that is a thing. Um, they just, it's about me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. And so many employers are dealing with employees complaining about rising uh, food prices, rising costs, rising expenses, rising everything. And the employees are left to kind of just deal with it. Mm. So are, the, so are the employers, though. <laughs> they are. And, and I honestly think, like, this, this is, and I, I, I wish I was, I, I watch history a lot better than what I, or consume it or even remember it. But I think in the past two generations, you know, probably Gen, Gen Z, some millennials out there, I think, I, I think it's been nothing but good. I think that for the past two generations, it's been nothing but just good times. Things have been up and up and up and always just doing well. And I think now that this economy is kind of starting to turn a little bit, I think inflation's obviously hedging. I think it's going up, unemployment. We have this COVID thing, we have so much stuff and there's actually like bad times. And I'm not saying this is bad times by any means because I don't think anybody except for probably my grandfather and maybe your grandmother really knows what bad times means Mm -hmm. because bad times have never existed in my lifetime or your lifetime. But I think people are starting to see it. And we were meeting with a client today, Sunday and, uh, at their home. And, and, uh, I didn't recognize this, but they said that they were, there was like a five or 6% increase in just cost of living, Mm -hmm. um, in the past few months. Like it was difference from October, September to October, I think, or no, was it June? It was June it was to October. June to October, it went up from what five to six percent mm-hmm. increase in costs. Yeah, you know, and it's just like you know, we, we go to Sam's Club, and it's like, my gosh, this stuff's expensive. Mm-hmm. Meat is so expensive. It is good bacon. meat. Bacon, <laughs> bacon, bacon. Mm-hmm. We did have triple bacon pizza. The yeah, other that day. was good. That was phenomenal, but that, that was expensive. I know everything's getting expensive. So I don't know. And we're all feeling it. Employees and employers and consumers and, you know, everybody's feeling it. They are. You know, it's not it. It's not good. So I think there's a lot of work to be done, and a lot of discussions to be had with a lot of people. And yeah. I think a lot of times the employer, I think there's going to be a time if that time is here, is I think employers are going to have to just sit down with their employees and just have real adult based conversations and bring them into the fold and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, not spill the beans by any means. Um, but really open up the books, show people the costs of what it runs to run a company and, and, you know, to have payroll, the expenses, lease, rent, you know, perks, Mm -hmm. health insurance, everything you have, and try to make sure that everybody comes to the conclusion of like, hey, listen, it is expensive mm-hmm. because so many people are about me, me, me. What's in it for me now? I, I, I don't care about my coworkers or the company. What's in it for me? So I get more. So I get more of the, of the pie and zero consideration for others. Mm-hmm. Not to say that happens a lot, but I've seen it. I've um, experienced it. Yeah, we have seen it. We have experienced it. And I think a lot of our clients are experiencing are. it too, which is part of why my world is kind of exploding right now. I think, um, you know, and I've read from all over the country, not even just the country, just all over, I mean, Australia even, mm-hmm. which is, things are pretty extreme there right now. But I hear over and over and over that there's this, there's this lack of accountability or there's this like expectation that I can go to work and I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to take breaks when I want to take breaks. I'm going to work as hard as I want to work and nobody's just going to tell me anything different. And it's really hard 
to deal with when you're trying to run a business because, I mean, HR is all about taking care of the employees and making sure everybody's happy and that is all well and good and wonderful and I am all for it. But there's got to be that reciprocating process too. Mm -hmm. I mean, employers have a job to do a job. So I don't understand why the expectation that you do your job is so whacked out right now. Like we ask people to do their job and it's just like, (gasps) you know, I just don't understand the mentality anymore. I had had have um, a client who I've worked with now for probably 20, 20 years, maybe at least going on 20 years. And it still upsets me. So don't, I mean, nobody take this the wrong way. Um, I'll kind of, I won't tell the entire story, but enough of the context where I was sitting in a meeting with him probably eight years ago and he was doing nothing but blaming the millennials, these kids, you know, this, um, group of people that feel that they, um, have certain righteousness that they're above everybody else that, that they can demand with what they want. Mm -hmm. And, I sat there and just, I, I didn't probably say it then, but mentally I was thinking, you know, this was a long time ago, but you know, like I, I kind of disagree. I don't think that it, that's not the way that they were born. I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. You do. This, this wasn't like they just inherited genetic traits of, from their parents of, they just ended up this way. And this wasn't, you know, a result of, the environment outside environment, you know, that they're in. And I think we heard it before. I think Simon Sinek said it, but it just ended up being a result of bad parenting and not our words, not Steve's words, but the words at which he had said in, in, in that talk. And it got to the point where, you know, a lot of these folks, these, these generational folks, you know, probably Gen Y, Gen Z or whatever, they're, they're used to the parents, doing everything for them. I mean, they're, they are not given the ability to, you know, really do much for themselves. You know, they, they, their, their parents are driving them to school every day, not making them walk. They are picking them up, dropping them off, not saying, Hey, just go hop on the bus or, you know, go walk to the mall. I don't care if it's, if, if it's three miles, if they go to Sally Sue's birthday party, everybody comes home with you know, gifts, because not only that it was Sally Sue's birthday where she should get the gift, but all the attendees also got gifts in order to make some, somebody not feel bad. Mm-hmm. And then we have, you know, ribbons for eighth place or ninth place or 10th place and people get a participation trophy. Mm-hmm. And it just is like, so now I think the employers are left to kind of deal with it. Mm-hmm. So we have these group of kids that are coming in and they're expecting, you know, I need more money. I just need more money. It's like, dad, I ran out of money last week. I need more, more money. I need to go, I need to go to the mall and buy more clothes. And it's really hard because the employers oftentimes older, oftentimes a different generation are like, nah, you got to work harder. You got to earn your keep. You got to, you know, do, you know, if work overtime, if you can, or get a second job or get a third job if you have to. But I think a lot of the folks are saying, well, I already worked my eight hours a day. I'm wiped. I got a mental health day I need, or I need to do this. And in the meantime, you watch from from afar. And even though that people complain about money, not having enough, we're still going to Starbucks. We're still going out to eat, eat lunch every day. We're still running to the store, buying, you know, energy drinks and everything else. And we're complaining that we don't have enough money. That's where I, I struggle in my head because Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. You and I probably overspend on, and we indulge. I mean, I just, I just bought like two or three pounds of Christmas candy <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and you know, stuff like that. And so, but I also know that if we don't have dollars, we go out and work and generate revenue to make those dollars. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we just have a full-time job where we have to work eight to five. We show up, we get a paycheck. It means that, Hey, if we have, you know, I don't know what Victor's going to charge, $3,800 in landscaping bills for stuff for the office or whatever, we have to go out and somehow earn those dollars to do it. We just cannot go and ask mom and dad or our employer and say, hey, um, I have a big bill this month. Uh, could you spot me some dollars? Mm-hmm. 
it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And I think from what you had said and where I feel, it seems like this is all coming together, like across the generational thing now with some of the younger ones, some of the older ones. It's more of yeah. just me, me, me. I was going to say it's not, it's not just that younger generation who was brought up that way. I think it's happening across the board throughout all generations. I mean, there's this shift in the way we think about work and it's very, very difficult for employers and we're seeing the impact in huge ways. I mean, businesses are shutting down because they don't have enough staff. Um, businesses that are still open, right. there is not one employer that I've spoken to in the last 18 months that hasn't said, I can't find any help. Yep. And it doesn't matter if it's fast food or engineering. I mean, it's all across the board. Nobody can find adequate help. And so we have this the shift in the way we think about work, the way we work, everything, and it, it's drastically affecting right. us and we have to figure it out because if we don't. Well, what's happening is I'm seeing like on signs is, as you're saying, it's like, we'll take anybody, you know, even the long haired creepy ones. We saw that sign in Omaha last yeah. year and, mm -hmm. or last summer and um, we'll hire anyone. I mean, the, the standards, if you, got a, if you got a record, if you've been incarcerated for, you know, 10 years, uh, we're looking past everything now because we just need help. Mm -hmm. Now, to that, that's an example of someone in the past may not have been able to hire someone that was incarcerated, mm -hmm. but now they're looking past that policy in order to hire someone because they're, they just need help. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's tough. It is hard. It's hard there's right no, now. There's nothing we can really do. I mean, just fight through it and, you know, keep, keep, hiring people if you can keep those those ads out there and and change and but be acceptance of the change yeah i mean you're not going to be able to stay at what you were three or four years ago mm -hmm. you're going to change and looking ahead seven years you're going to be a whole different company than you even thought you were going to be at that time back two or three years ago yeah well look at what's happened since the beginning of 2020 I mean, things have changed and shifted drastically and it's not stopping. Right. It's not stopping anytime soon. So it'll be interesting to see how things play out. It is. A couple questions. I'm going to dive into them a little bit. Um, bring up my handy dandy notebook. I love that phrase. <laughs> the original Steve, not, not <laughs> his brother. What was his brother's yeah, name? I don't know. It wasn't the same. No. <laughs> I saw him on TikTok. Yeah, I saw him on TikTok the other night. The original Steve, hmm. kind of creepy. <laughs> He's trying to be the same person as he was back in the day, but just much older face, older. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. When you are faced with two equally qualified candidates, how do you choose which one you hire, considering you only need to hire one employee? Now, it's a godsend there's two people there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, right? <laughs> have we ever been faced with this problem? We have. Not lately. Uh, not, not as of late, no, but we have been faced with, you know, how do we, how do we pick between the two employees? Well, are you asking me or are you oh, asking? Oh, sure. I'm just asking. Of course not. Well. I'm asking the person over there. <laughs> there's nobody over there. I know. I made you look at it. Okay. Um very rarely do you have two equally qualified candidates. I mean, all, there's always pros and cons in some direction. So very rarely are you going to have this happen. But if you do have it happen for some weird reason, um, you take into consideration all the things. And that's, um, you know, education, work history, um, communication, that feeling in the interview of whether or not they were going to fit with your team. Right. Um, so you have two people, two equally. Okay. You have two individuals and say there's, there's, there's a score. Say, say there's five personality traits or five traits in a person in which you're looking to hire and, and all five traits are met. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. hundred percent over here, hundred percent over here. However, two of the traits, one person, is better qualified from a technical perspective of the job than the other person. However, the other person is more qualified from a people-person interaction, you know, more sociable than the other person. But equally, 
the scores match up to a hundred percent. So they're equal balanced. Do you hire the person that is more socially um, able to speak and communicate? Yes. Versus one that is more technical. Speak and communicate. Yeah, I agree. There's, there's, I mean, so much of our job is actually communication. It is. And you can take, you can teach anybody the technical aspects of a job, but if somebody can't communicate and can't get along with others and can't be social and can't speak with our clients appropriately, we tend to have issues. You know, we interviewed that gentleman last week mm-hmm. and we, we made an offer to him that evening and uh, he accepted and I was mm-hmm. happy. I'm not going to release his name now in case something weirdly doesn't happen, but um, he offered he's going to start in a week or two from now. And, um, what what had me like you know I got the technical piece like I can sit in an interview with with somebody for 17 seconds and and pretty much understand whether or not they're going to have the chops or if close to the chops enough to fill the duties. Mm-hmm. But when you start to talk to them about personal stuff, not personal, but just kind of run of the mill stuff, to me that's what that's where the juice is, and that's why I like it. Mm-hmm. And you had said something to them and about. I forget what it was even about. It was about a topic. And you said the word quirks and features. <laughs> yeah. And it was, and he immediately said, oh. Yeah, exactly what I was talking about. You watched Doug DeMero too. And I was like, done. <laughs> You're hired. hired. I'm hired. I mean, I, I, I could have just gone up, dropped the mic, left the, left the room. <laughs> I'm off to my another day. This kid's starting. <laughs> it's just because most people inside those roles don't know who he is oh yeah and there were uh, there were several other things that we kind of throw out there that he picked up on and we were like he know he knew what you were talking about he and so i think you were just like yeah you met your soulmate or something i don't no, know i wouldn't go that far <laughs> i mean i think he's a really good guy but i uh, it was just it was just weird i mean you know the Inside the, the, the technical, inside the, the, the IT world, I mean, anybody can apply for a job and that person can say or claim to be extremely knowledgeable on whatever topic or topics that there are, but the reality is proof is in the pudding and within two weeks, two weeks of starting, you're either going to know if that person is bullshitting or not. Oh, yeah. In, in Probably within world, the first yes. day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I agree with you. Pers- personality is number one with me. Yeah. So it's big. Yeah. Unless we have to have like certified people on staff, personality ain't going to get me very far. <laughs> no. So that's a whole nother issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> question number two for the evening What is the worst mistake a potential Soren Group employee, potential employee, can make during an interview with you. So that kind of tags into what we're talking now. Hmm. What's the biggest mistake that somebody can make in an interview with us, our company, that's immediately going to say no? Sorry. Like almost to the point where we're just going to escort them out the door and say goodbye. During the interview yes. or just the whole process of the... Sure. Uh, let's open up to the whole process. Okay. Bad follow through. Follow through or follow up or both? Both. Both. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. um, When you email somebody or have a phone call scheduled or, you know, ask a question and there's no response and you don't hear from them or it just, or you set up an interview and they cancel because of this, but they want to, it just, it's not good. For me, it's when the stories don't line up. There's a series of questions that I like to ask or comments or stories at which we engage in. And sometimes it, I'm not going to say forces. I don't like that word, but it, we try to make a story, this per, like the candidate talk about something or a story and then come back and revisit that story or talk about something again. And just, I like to see if they're flubbing up a little bit. Oh well, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, it's good to ask the same question in several different ways. So you get kind of a full yeah. picture of yeah. what they're really and talking about. And I've seen about. that many times where they're like, oh yeah, I did this. And two years ago I was here, but then a year I did this. And then, but a year Prior to that, I took a, I took some time off. Well, wait a minute. Two years ago, you did this. A year ago, you did this. But during that year, you said you took a year off prior to that. That would put it back two years, right? Oh, well, no, that wasn't. I mean, so it's like they're digging themselves out. Yeah. And I, I typically will just say no. And also, I'll say no to anybody that is, um, you know, any way, shape, or form um, 
discriminating against any anybody anything in the world so mm-hmm. it's not mac no it's there's there's no way mm-hmm. so that's my two things hmm. I've, yeah. had, I've had to experience every single one of them too i know it's a bad deal mm-hmm. and also the people that show up in suits for the interviews <laughs> there's a lot of people who do that i know but i almost say no every time on those two <laughs> well they were taught all through school that you dress professionally to an interview I think they don't that, know how we, they don't know us. Well I think you to have to research dress, the people in which you're interviewing with. Well, though. that's very important to do. I agree with that. I mean, but very, there's not a whole lot of people who do that. Stalk me on Instagram. Stalk me on <laughs> Facebook. Stalk me on here. Engage in conversations. Yeah, so. it's important. It shows some initiative and some like, do you really want this position? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had a lot of people just show up and have no idea who we are. No. So that's. That's kind of always a fun conversation. Yeah, like office space when they when they're going in for their role review, and eh, I just kind of show up and do my thing, and mm, I don't know. Yeah, I love that. I love that movie. If you would, would you walk us through a typical day for you? Yeah, great. Well, I generally come in at least fifteen minutes late. Uh, I use the side door that way Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> And uh, after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Uh, Space out? Yeah. I just stare at my desk. But it looks like I'm working. I do that for uh, probably another hour after lunch, too. I'd say in a given week, I probably only do about 15 minutes of real, actual work. I've never seen it. You've never seen the movie? No. You've never seen like you've you've seen parts though, haven't you? Nah, like tiny little snippets. You've never seen. Oh, we're got to do that. I've never seen it. Yeah. But nothing is gonna, nothing is gonna beat Ghostbusters Afterlife. That was such a good movie. That was a good movie. That was fun. Did I'm you glad cry? We got to it. No. Did you? I. <laughs> I think I did a little <laughs> bit 1984 when. 1984 reminiscing. No, when, <laughs> when the guy came back and his. I'm not gonna. I I can't yeah, spoil can't, it. Don't spoil it. But at the, but at the end, yeah, when they're I know fighting off the about. bad guy. Yeah, I know exactly. I what was you're like, about. I think I actually cried a little bit. <laughs> I was like, it was sad. It was happy sad. It was happy sad. It was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that was this sweet. 1984 feeling came all over my body again, and I was like, wow. Yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife, super good movie. Yeah, I'd go see it again with the kids. Yeah, I would too. It was fun. Yeah, I think we should. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Now? Sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd go in a heartbeat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Next. Next. Any more questions? Uh, that's all I got for tonight. Okay. That's good. That's okay. I keep on fiddling. Like the past four podcasts, I've been playing with this memory card thing. Yeah. Like fidgety. Is it annoying? No, I just, I don't even... I notice myself on video when I rewatch the podcast just to kind of make sure I, I, I'm like tapping Maybe it. Maybe we should put it up. No, I don't think so. Okay. Probably should. Okay. All right. Everybody, have a great holiday week. Um, yeah. We're going to try and knock out a couple more podcasts this week, I think, just to kind of get worked up ahead a little bit because we got a busy, busy December coming on. We do. Yes, and we do. with all these other issues, we might be... Uh, <laughs> Out yeah. of commission for a minute. Out of commission, stocking up, doing something. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night. Um, great week. And uh, catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.